Hi, I want to title this video, What's Up With Atheism? For someone who's named his video that, he actually talks about atheism very little. But hey, let's do this. Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. Today we're talking to a fellow named Mike Finnerty, which actually kind of gives me the Wiggins because when I was little I had this Captain Kangaroo album about a guy named Finnerty Flynn, and now I can't get the song out of my head. Anyway, Mike's going to talk for a bit about his religious experiences. He's also going to repeat himself a lot, so you're not going to see me reply to his entire video. But if you're curious, as always, there will be a link in the description. Um, back in uh, 19, mid-1990s, around 1995, um, I experienced, uh, you can say, a conversion uh, or a deeper conversion um, in my faith which <clears throat> led me to believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I'll be honest, I can't imagine what such a thing might be like. I mean, to be fair, he says it brings him to a deeper commitment to his faith, but I've heard of people who've gone from non-belief to sudden fanaticism because... reasons? I mean, how do you have that sort of sudden revelation that not only is there a God, but it's that God? Closest I can come at all, and I'll admit it's not that close, is when I realized that Roxette is my favorite band. It was when I was making mixtapes off of the radio, with record and pause pressed at the same time, so I could unpause quickly when a song I like came up. And then I realized that something like half of the songs I was recording were by the same band. That's honestly the closest I have to any sort of, quote, revelation. I've been noticing uh, throughout the past several years as um, people who claim to profess a belief in the Bible or the gospel have uh, can are sorry are being continuously ostracized from society and uh, made to feel as though their Christian faith is um, or their belief in God for that matter is um, sort of dehumanizing. I would like examples of Christians being ostracized or to hear how he's using the word, because it wouldn't shock me to discover he's gotten it wrong. The fact is that yes, Christianity is often dehumanizing of others. Do we need to get into the homophobia that is rampant within religious communities? How many times have there been attempts to pass laws enforcing Christian doctrines on everybody? My last video was about Brian Fisher trying to claim that only Christians have freedom of religion in the United States. This fellow is Canadian, but the point stands. His claims sound, more than anything else, like someone who is unhappy about losing their privilege, their superior status. Incidentally, this guy's speech goes even slower than my sex life. So, I'm going to speed him up a bit. Fair warning. So, um, I was watching something on TV last night which was uh, talking about how um, we're living in a time now where there's people, uh, um, comparatively so, in, 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 the, in, in the atrocities that happened, uh, you know, in the Holocaust, um, whereas now uh, it's kind of like on a mass scale where... Um, our Christians are, are, are becoming dehumanized, um, and it's a frightening thing. He's actually comparing the Holocaust to what? Are Christians being thrown into ovens, being beaten in the streets, being driven from their homes? What is the worst Christians have suffered on any kind of mass scale at the hands of other people for being Christian? In fact, if you type dehumanizing of Christians into Google, the vast majority of what you'll get is the reverse, Christians dehumanizing others. And the few cases you'll get with Christians being the target, most of what you'll read is theists bitching about and being unable to accept criticism for their behavior. So I ask again, where are Christians being dehumanized? I want examples. Because um, the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Well, of course the book that wants you to believe it is going to say you're a dumbass if you don't. What kind of argument is that? You're basically patting yourself on the back and dehumanizing anybody who doesn't agree. The bionic dance says the fool is said in his brain that God exists. Now where does that leave us? You're gonna have to do better than that if you want to be convincing. I maintained a, a steady belief in God um, up until college where I kind of 
you know, God uh, challenged uh, in my faith. Uh, and but, but basically, uh, so when I was uh, didn't stop, I stopped believing a little bit. I didn't stop believing completely. Um, I was preferring certain lifestyle over, um, you know, my belief in God. Oh, I wish he'd elaborate on that one. It sounds juicy. Was he drinking a lot? Was he gay? Did he get intrigued by Wicca or Hinduism or something? This is such a tease. So I, I just wanted to make this video and just say, like, what's up with atheism? It's really strange that there's, I'm, um, you know, searching on YouTube and I'm seeing all these videos about, like, my deconversion story and, you know, this is what I used to be. I used to be this and now I'm this. And it's just like, um, it's strange because I think when... I first started watching these watching stories about deconversion from Christianity. It kind of intrigued me because I was like, um, you know, the Bible says those who claim to know God, um, you know, we need grace. He's going to use the term grace a lot. Like I said, he repeats himself a fair bit. It's one of those words that Christians use over and over. There's a lot of biblical language that you just don't hear in the real world, and it starts to sound nonsensical if you don't go to their clubhouse. Grace, in a religious context, can mean kindness, sometimes unearned kindness, but it can also mean favor as in favoring God over others, bending the knee before a superior. And he says we need that. No, we don't. And we certainly shouldn't need it. Is that really a world in which you'd like to live? We've overthrown dictators for pulling that kind of crap. Why should a God be any different? Right, so um, if we're living our Christian life and we're feeling like it's slipping from us, um, that's why I enjoy attending a church where um, there's sacramental grace. So. Uh, grace is given to, to sinners uh, prior to conversion and also after conversion. That was a bit of a ramble, a wee smidge of advice. If you're not going to script your videos, at least write down an outline so you're not firing all over the place, hitting nothing. From what he said, though, it sounds as if he fights doubt by attending another indoctrination meeting, rather than engaging in some true critical thinking and examination of his position. Maybe I'm wrong, but that suggests to me that he's awfully close to atheism he just doesn't want to be. I'm not going to guess at his reasons. That's a rather dickish thing that theists do to atheists when they tell us why we don't believe. And as I said, I could totally be wrong here. Another thing that theists so rarely admit. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to, or those who are watching who may have had a deconversion from Christianity, but it's kind of strange because um, uh, just saying you're a Christian doesn't, or a believer in God or someone who has faith uh, doesn't necessarily, I mean, like I said, I was I had faith ever since I was a kid, and I grew up believing in God. Um, and I'm just not necessarily trying to challenge those who have had a deconversion. But um, for me, I like to talk about my own faith, and so what my faith does for me is it actually gives me hope. Okay, I wouldn't want to deprive people of hope. I really wouldn't. But what if that hope is false? What if a God really doesn't exist and you're placing all of your trust in something that will never pay off? What should give us hope is the chance of possibility, actually seeing what could be, what we could try to do for ourselves. It may seem counterintuitive, but a genuinely bleak universe can inspire hope because we'll want to make it better rather than wallow in it. Take initiative. We don't need a God for that. We just need to not sit on our ass and wish. After all, doesn't God help those who help themselves? Well, if you're helping yourself, what do you need a God for? And so at a certain age, we have to make a choice and a, dec and a decision, like, am I going to follow Christ? And um, what does that mean for me? And so for me, when I was 21, what that meant for me was that uh, Jesus was my Lord. Um, he was my savior. And so I had to ask for forgiveness um, again. Uh, you know, ask for forgiveness for, for all of my sins. This is a concept I find rather obnoxious. Let's suppose it's true that Jesus died to save us from sin. Well, why isn't that enough? Why do we have to now beg for forgiveness after that big old BDSM show with God's kid? I mean, never mind that a death shouldn't have been necessary, much less torture, not from a loving God with unlimited power. Let's ride right past that. Explain why it didn't just wipe the sin slate completely. The most likely reason is that it let the church retain power. If sin just went away, the clergy would become obsolete, unnecessary. And that would be true with or without a real God. I think in Ephesians it says, For by grace have you been saved. Um, you know, not through yourselves. It's, it's a gift of God. Well, that's not entirely true, is it? You still have to bow and scrape and tromp all over your own self-esteem before you can be given this 
gift. Oh, don't grovel. One thing I can't stand is people groveling. Sorry. And don't apologize. Every time I try to talk to someone, it's sorry this and forgive me that and I'm not worthy. And when life, you know, becomes challenging and difficult, it's... I don't blame that on God. I'm not like, God, why are you making this life so hard for me right now? It's not your fault. I mean, you're sovereign, but I'm not going to, like, rely on some kind of esoteric knowledge of God to give me comfort when I know that it's my, it's God, it's the Holy Spirit living within me that's, that's making me holy and doing the work of sanctification. So, um, yeah. Um, Someone walk me through the logic here because I've never had a Christian do it. A triple omni God, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnibenevolent, isn't at fault when something in his creation goes pear-shaped and he doesn't fix it. The claim is usually that we have free will, so it's up to us and not God to fix things, which still makes no sense. One of those omnis isn't really omni. He either doesn't know, doesn't care, or doesn't have the power to fix it. You have to pick one and admit that your God isn't real, or at least doesn't exist as described. You know, if you've lost your belief in God or you're struggling, you don't know why certain things have happened, um, just pray for more grace. Ask God to give you the grace to, to, to keep going. So the advice here is that if you don't believe in God, start asking him to do magic tricks. I don't believe in the Force. Should I ask Luke Skywalker to start giving me lessons? If your faith starts flagging, you want proof not to phone into the psychic helpline. That you won't provide any proof. That your only advice is prayer tells me you haven't really thought this one through. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. Even YouTubers need Ferraris. Please donate on Patreon. People not subscribing to Bionic Dance is one sign of the apocalypse. Save us all. Subscribe now.